Hello guys, Luna here. Welcome back to another Assassin's Creed Valhalla video. In this one, I'm giving you guys 43 awesome and useful tips for beginners and for experienced players alike. And if you don't watch the entire video, here is one of the most important things that you guys should know. So one of the best tips I found out later in the game is that if you have the two Dive of the Valkyrie abilities, so Dive of the Valkyries level two, then you can unlock any of the barred doors, including castle gates, which you do during sieges, by using the ability on them. This will save you guys hours and hours of not having to search for ways into buildings and finding keys. So getting the two Dive of the Valkyrie abilities as early on as possible is one of the things that you should definitely do. Okay then guys, here are 42 more useful tips for you guys in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Don't waste any materials or ingots on upgrading any weapons. Wait to get the best weapons first. You can get some of the most powerful stuff early in the game, even from the higher level areas. The incendiary powder trap ability should be picked up as soon as possible. It's located in the first area of England, so you can get it early on. Doing so is useful for blowing open any destroyable walls, and there are lots of them in the game. Once you have it, you can get one of the best weapons. Located in Hamptonshire, which is power level 340, you can sneak and pick up the Border Axe, which will serve you well for the whole game, and in fact, it's still the weapon that I use. A second good choice for early game weapons is one of the longswords, either Doppelhander, which is found in any of the stores, or the Carolingian longsword located in East Anglia. It's not quite as powerful as the Vardar Axe, but it is quicker and arguably funner to use against multiple enemies like soldiers. Whenever you go to any new town, visit the store and buy up all the iron. You simply can't have enough iron in the game and it restocks after a little while in any store. Stamina use is dependent on your armor. Light armor, meaning wolf or raven, uses less stamina than bear armor when you dodge, meaning you can dodge an extra time with light armor before your stamina is depleted. If you want heavy armor and extra stamina, then equipping bear armor without a cloak is the only way you can do that. If an enemy has a shield or is defending, parrying their attack drops their defenses so you can attack them. Remember to use your power attacks with the RT or R2 button. I didn't realize this for quite a while and I always pressed the button and held it down which brings up the ability menu, but tapping it is how you use your heavy attack. Enemy attacks are predictable so you can learn them to know when to strike and avoid being hit. A good combat strategy is to always hit and move. Several attacks followed by a dodge and repeat works great against most enemies or groups of enemies, especially if they're more powerful ones. Use up your ability attacks whenever you have stamina, as stronger enemies can drain your stamina when they hit you. Time your powerful abilities to when an enemy is attacking with their red attack to counter the attack. When fighting zealots, lure them to water and summon your longship, and this will help distract the zealot so you can kill him easier. And speaking of zealots, when fighting them, make sure to target the glowing orange parts or the weak spots with arrows. This will give you enough time for one powerful hit that will significantly reduce their health. Holding a torch with a bow allows you to shoot fire arrows. If you can't hold both as with this bow, drop the torch and you can dip your arrows in the fire. You can throw torches at enemies to set them on fire. When dodging, I can dodge five times because I have bare armor equipped. But holding the dodge button on your last piece of stamina will give you that fifth dodge plus an extra roll dodge for free. So that's six altogether and seven if you had light armor. Useful for tougher enemies when you need to dodge lots of times and your stamina bar gets depleted very quickly. When you first start, focus on one type of armor first, bear, raven or wolf, and upgrade the appropriate skill tree for that. That will give you a big boost to your weapon and armors early on but don't worry, you will eventually start to upgrade the other skill trees. If you don't like the skills you've chosen, or you've changed to a new weapon or armor type, then you can respec your skills at any time. Make sure to kill every animal you come across, not only for the XP and the rations, but the animal parts are needed for hunter challenges and altered tributes, and they can be sold for silver. 
Fish can be caught in exchange for gifts at the fishing hut in your village. However, fishing is slow and boring. You can catch fish, however, much quicker with a bow and arrow. There is a spot in Northwick, East Anglia, where you can kill fish with your weapon in the shallow water for gathering tons of fish very quickly. The trader sits right next to the dock as well, so you can sell all that fish for extra silver. One of the quickest way to earn silver is selling fish, with some of the fish reaching 20 silver each. If you're looking for some very easy silver, then there is a bug in this place called Walden in Gwentbridgeshire where you can bet on drinking contests. You're only supposed to be able to bet once, but you can keep repeating it at this location and you can make thousands of silver every hour. Don't bother collecting treasures from regions before you do the alliance missions to prevent repeatedly killing the same enemies. This is because a lot of the wealth chests are located in enemy strongholds, which you usually go to in many of the missions, and so the enemies will respawn. So you may as well wait to do the mission until before picking up many of the treasures. Plus, there are some items that can't be reached until doing certain missions. Always unlock fast travel points when close to them, as missions often take you back and forth across the map regions, and so unlocking the fast travel point as soon as you arrive in a region is definitely worth the time. Remember that many villages have docks to unlock fast traveling points, so make sure you travel close to the dock to unlock them. Whenever you come across minerals to mine, you should always do so because you need thousands of iron ore in the game and also lots of titanium. Holding X when on a horse or boat will auto move for you. Pressing Y will head towards a marker or mission objective. If you can't auto follow to mission objectives, set a marker on the map close to a road nearby the mission that you're going to and the horse will follow that instead. Upgrade your settlement and your stables as quick as possible, as this will allow you to upgrade your horse to be able to swim across rivers and will give him increased stamina. You can loot from your horse. When riding your horse, try to stick to roads as much as possible because traveling on them doesn't use up any of your horse's stamina. You can meditate to change the time of day. When falling from a height that will damage or even kill you, pause the game and then unpause just before you hit the ground and you won't take any damage. If you don't have any arrows, torches can be thrown to knock down hanging crates. Torches will temporarily remove gas. You can steal boats if you don't want to call your longship. Lots of missions only give you the general area of where you're going and you need to search for possible people, clues or items. Your raven is the easiest way to find exactly where things are. When carrying a crate or people, usually for quests, and you need to place them down, pressing the dodge button automatically drops them on the ground, skipping the place down animation. Lastly, make sure to do the daily and weekly contracts for Reda in the village, where you get rewarded opal used to buy the unique legendary items for sale in that store. But the targets you kill often have decent stuff on them as well, like ruins and multiple building materials, so they are worth doing. So guys, there you have it, 43 very helpful and useful tips for beginners, and I'm sure there is a couple in there for anyone who's experienced that might not know. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any tips of your own and you want to share them, leave them in the comments below as well for everyone to enjoy. Until next time, guys, have an awesome day, and I will see you all in the next video.